Crime is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. With his Latino lover, Juan Mashevsky. Oh, dude, that I was wondering when you were going to stop pretending to be Jewish and start embracing your real heritage. See, si, mi amor, see. Si. Let's play that music. See. Si. Crime is the show that starts now. Like right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to, to me. Don't Let, you dare. Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. Welcome back, everybody. Wait. It's great for you to be here. Yeah, that's the pause that we put in so we can drop the music in. <laughs> Thanks for pulling back the curtain there. Our guest break the fourth wall. <laughs> we'll that's right. we'll hey, introduce our down. fourth wall breaking guest in a moment. But first, <laughs> we need to thank some of those sponsors because uh, surprise, surprise, we actually have them, Mr. Guest. That's right. We'll be introduced soon. First up, C3 Risk and Insurance. We I didn't put a oh, timer in. We got to get it cleaner and shorter. We got to introduce. Let's introduce our sponsors. C3, C3 Risk, Risk and Insurance services. services. Dude, you guys need insurance and you got to go get it now because this life is crazy. It's only getting crazier. Check out C3 Risk Insurance Services. Our buddy Joe Earl there will give you a $25 Amazon gift card if you get a policy with him. He'll take care of your commercial insurance needs, residential, home, car, whatever you need insurance for, he's got you covered. Tell him Shevsky sent you. You'll get an extra, well, you'll still get the same percentage off. Yeah, C3 Risk and Insurance <laughs> Services. Also, uh, oh. back again, our friends at Studio Headphones. Studio. Shevsky finally got his. Oh, my God, they're amazing. It's velvety. They fit into your ear. They the, plug them up nice. They block out the bad sound from the outside world that sucks. The tray has over nine hours of battery life, ten days of standby. Oh. Uh, it's sweat-proof. It's great for if you're working out. It won't fall oh, out of your head you a whole bunch. You can have sex with them on in the summertime in a sauna. Super cool s- Swedish design. Yeah, also, inspired by Phil Collins. Yeah. I mean, what's not to like? Those are all true facts that Shevsky has said, more true than things that I've said. Also, they work while they're charging. So if they if the battery goes out... Like if you if you let's say you can't take them out because they're so good, which yeah. I've I've had that issue because sure. they're so addictive. While you're driving, you can have them plugged in and charging and use them. They're killer. Use the discount code CRIME15 to get 15% off any purchase, and we'll be linking that on our social media as well. So you can go check that out. But enough of all that palaver. Let's get into the show today. Our guest. Uh, I don't know if you ever watch TV, but if you have, you, you might have watched. You ever seen TV before? Yeah, there's a show called Workaholics. <laughs> oh, uh, way to introduce that one, Big. There's yeah. a show called Workaholics. It's, it, it's one like of the it. best comedies out there right now. Pe- people have enjoyed it. Is it still out? I don't think it's out anymore, but you know what it is it's out? out the, the second world. season of I'm Dying Up Here on Showtime. Oh, my goodness. Put your virtual You want to see together. sideburns? Check this man out. For Eric Griffin! <laughs> That's Eric's clapper. He brought her in. <laughs> you guys are insane. <laughs> why we caffeinate before this show i'm on speed i get it well thanks for having me um <laughs> i'm glad we could do this before our three course lobster and steak dinner we're really excited about oh, it i'm gonna, are, I'm gonna so take pumped. you guys to dinner but, for oh, oh, tongues man. aroused it's ready to eat yeah, yeah. that's all we're all about i we, starved all day we're going tonight right okay good <laughs> attila we can go after this actually <laughs> attila ambrose was born october 6 1967 in a one street village nestled in the mountains of transylvania is this a story about Transylvania? Uh, Transylvania is a big part of the story. Oh, wow. wait. Are we doing Twilight? Is that what's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a dark and scary crime. <laughs> Life was difficult partially because his mom left when he was a baby to become a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, was a guy named Attila? Yeah. Attila's a very popular Hungarian name. Was Attila the Hun a woman or a man? A man. Oh, so I guess all the Attilas I know are men. Yeah, congrats, man. Yeah, move Proud on. of you, bro. Never mind. Attila. Dad, after mom left, dad had to bribe a local official to keep custody of his son by giving him a pig. So that's kind of what <laughs> this small town in Transylvania is like. What do you do with the pig? I mean, I'm going to leave that up to your imagination. Okay. It was also hard because Attila was an ethnic Hungarian. Since the 9th century, Transylvania had been Hungarian either by law or ethnic majority, but eventually the demographics flipped. And at the end they of the world, they sh- yeah, yeah. What kind of Jewy bullshit is that's that? What it, that's what Eventually, it is Eventually, the demographic shaboinkin. Why don't you lead the damn show for once? <laughs> I do, but I let you think you're doing it. <laughs> Eventually, they flipped. At the end of World War I, a vote made Transylvania part of Romania, and Hungarians became second-class citizens. Mm. As a child, Attila quickly learned the lay of the land. There's going to be a race war. Yeah, that's what that's what this whole thing's <laughs> <Right>? about. <laughs> Eric's like, what kind of show did I get yeah. involved in? What is it's happening? a race war in Transylvania. There's, sending, there's t- pigs. Yeah. There's Jehovah Witness. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a setting for actually a really good show. Pigs, come, come, coming to Fox. Yeah. <laughs> 
this may or may not be in development, like half the stories that we end up doing. That's right. As a child, Attila learned the lay of the land. He was arrested at seven years old for climbing too high in a tree. Wait, he was arrested? Arrested. Wow. That's so how hard it was. That's a strict town yeah. right there. Romania, so long story boring, when Transylvania became part of Romania, Romanians became like super duper oppressed to the point where the secret police would bust in your house and bug all your phones right in front of you. They'd be like, we're putting this in now, so fuck you. Oh, it was Nazi style fascism. Oh, yeah. One time when uh, some political dissidents. One time, you say to, it like you were there. To, one time. One, one I was there once. <laughs> they the, to to torch like to torture some guys. They killed them by just doing continuous X rays on their chests until they got cancer. That was oh, how they killed people. Brutal. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. These guys are insane. This is awful. Okay. Yeah, but they're I'm great already gymnasts. depressed. Thanks yeah, for but, great. But, dep- but would you rather be like eaten by a shark, buried alive, or slowly given cancer by a, a laser? Yeah. How? What is? What's your definition of slow? Is this like a couple of weeks that they just X rayed them? Because that just sounds boring. Yeah, too. you're just like in a room getting x-rayed. <laughs> they make you go into the they make you go into the waiting room too. Like fill out this paperwork before we can see now you. That's like, the, ah! Yeah, that's the real torture where you have to keep doing a real doctor visit. <laughs> yeah, they keep asking you for your insurance. <laughs> they make you wait for forty five minutes. Me. Yeah, then they take you in a room and they're like, the doctor will be right with you. You need to prove your income for this Obamacare. <laughs> just my, shoot me. My torture appointment was for nine in the morning. It's ten thirty five right now. I have things. To, I have pigs to trade. Seriously, how long do they take to kill these people? They would spend like they would do like ten minute sessions on their chest. For how many times in a row? I don't know. I, d- I didn't get that deep. It was just a, a note on how they tortured Roma- uh, Hungarians. Okay, I'm sorry Romania. for pressuring you. I'm just into science. Oh, man. Go on. Two years later, he That's was... That's science? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> science, bruh. <laughs> Two years later, Attila moved in with his grandparents in Sherada, a beautiful centuries-old city with an all-Hungarian population, only to have Romanian bulldozers arrive months later and destroy the 13th century buildings to make way for state-owned industrial plants. Ah, great planet. The know. government even outlawed the Romanian name, or the Hungarian name, requiring only the Romanian name be used. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I didn't know Hungary has such like a sad past. I thought Hungary was just Well, like... Hungary was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and there was it, Hungary was big time for a long time. And then, long story boring, World War I kind of fucked up everything for that region. Yeah. And Hungary got a lot of bad stuff. What year is this in again? This is 1967. Oh, this is way after. It, was, yeah. I know. This is not even... That's pretty recent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, history. So ha- they were arresting seven-year-olds... Uh, in the in 70s. 67? Yeah, while Hendrix was playing guitar solos and in the shit? Early, in the early 70s, they wow. were arresting seven-year-olds. Okay. Yeah. Tim, I'm, I'm with this is, you're just setting everything up setting now. The, setting the story. He's just letting setting us know how story. miserable you, this person's life was so before they turned Every, every criminal it's happens a, for a reason, Eric. It's a winter spring in the, Hungary. That's right. Still, Attila found himself in trouble. He regularly pilfered vegetable fields to feed his 50 pet rabbits. This is after the arrest. Yeah, this is around, oh, in, in conjunction with being arrested like a lot. Imagine he just got out, it's been a couple weeks, and he's like, God, my rabbits are starving, I don't have any money, all I know is crime, I'm going to go steal some veggies, a couple he, of zucchinis. I mean, if you get arrested for climbing a tree, yeah, you like, get, what happens for that's... an actual crime? Oh, yeah. oh don't you worry, you will find out. Oh, oh God, okay. uh, I don't think I want to at this point. Uh, Attila stole bottles from the back of the recycling center and brought them around front to return for cash. Well, that's clever. I don't yeah. hate him for that. I'm like, he's a smart little kid in a fascist world. The local church once hired him to guard the valuable artifacts the day before Easter. The priest found him the next morning, passed out on the dais, drunk on communion wine. Oh. That's something my little brother would do. He was excommunicated. Yeah, you can't just have Jesus all in you like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you barf him up after you have too much Jesus in you. Uh. Attila loved hockey, sneaking into every game of the local, only all Hungarian squad in the country. Hell yeah. He played goalie for a prestigious local boarding school until he was expelled for short-circuiting the electricity on exam day. Well, this guy's a nightmare. Mm-hmm. And he's my favorite so far. Yeah, he's, yeah he's hilarious. He's a real hockey player, too. Did he get in any fights? This sounds like half of my friends. Like, you, you, you stole I mean, recycling to sell back for money. I mean, this is how you become Nino Brown or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> he just wanted to feed his rabbits, guys. Yeah. He didn't want to take a test. You guys never called in a bomb threat to avoid I a test in your school? I don't believe that he had rabbits as pets. I think he was going to use them. I'm with you on that. He was going to cut, cut them up and, like, do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. He might not have. He was going to have, like, a, like, he was going to make coats or something. He just seems like that kind of kid. You got to make a rabbit coat in that temper. Have you been to Hungary in That's the winter time? Saying. Like, why would you have 50 rabbits? Okay, anyway, Eric, the neocon griffin, they call him. <laughs> You know, we got to stay tough on crime. These rabbit thieves. <laughs> He's a 1960s. His luck finally ran out at 16 years old when he was caught stealing musical instruments from a popular local wedding band. Well, wow, he did all this before 16. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He got arrested at seven. This, this guy's, guy's already amazing. Got, yeah, he's, got he's already got a record. Oh, yeah. Now, did he have like that, that, that mug shot at seven? You know, yeah. where he's got. <laughs> they made him hold the thing. <laughs> he's holding the, the numbers. Uh, he's got kids. He's got kids that he doesn't take care of. He's eight. 
Romanian authorities threw the book at the thief with a Hungarian name. He spent two months in a basement jail before being shipped off for a two-year stint at a brutal detention facility. Okay, first of all, why is it so specific a basement jail? As opposed to, what, an attic jail or, like, above-ground jail? Wayne's World, I feel the like warden. jails are worse if they're underground. Okay, a basement jail. All right. Yeah. Doesn't everything seem worse underground as we do this podcast from the basement of the comedy store? I get, I, I don't it's know. terrifying. I kind of see your point. All right. <laughs> he got out in 1987, sort of. On release, he, like many Romanians with criminal records, was pressed into military service. He worked as a slop cook with occasional breaks to carry railroad ties. Did you say slop cook? Yes. S-L-O-P? S-L-O-P. Yeah. That's what's for dinner in Romania. They call it Denny's now? Yeah. <laughs> porridge. Denny's porridge. The grand slop. Well, we do live in a prison society. It's the just whatever eggs, it's whatever eggs were left. The slop the slam. Thing. I like the slop slam. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> this gravy sucks. <laughs> Can it's, I get a slop slam? <laughs> It's just the extra egg they Two scrape slop off slams the slams coming right up. Two slop slams. You must pay for it with <laughs> rabbit or wife. Uh, twice he spent a week with no food in a freezing outdoor pit for the mistake of answering his commanding officer's questions in Hungarian. After 16 Damn. months. Yeah, no, they're that harsh. That is harsh for an accident like that. Yeah. Well, don't be Hungarian. That's the I would rule never, of all this. My great-grandfather was Hungarian. He somehow survived. Yeah, well, he prob- lived, probably a criminal. Well, he was in the bougie part of Hungary, obviously. He was in Hungary, actually, <laughs> as opposed to being in Romania. He That's was very thing. full. He was never hungry. You know, you, you hear stories like this, and you're like, oh, this is this is what like people are like so shocked about the way America deals with like differences. Yeah. And they go, oh, we're terrible with, with immigrants. And I'm like, yeah, we totally are. But they act like it's just America. Right. And I'm like, in, in Ireland, they beat Polish people just for— Yeah. For, Where do you think we learned this shit from? Yeah. It's not, new, it's not new. How do you even tell the difference between a Polish person and an Irish person if you're in, the, in you know, if you're just well, there? When they're Blonde sc- hair. When they're screwing in a light bulb, they— <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Whatever. <laughs> that's what just going with some dumb joke. <laughs> no, that's a classic. That is— I'm glad you brought that up. That was a classic. <laughs> After 16 months, he was finally discharged. How many Polish people does it take to tell the difference between a Polar and Irishman? Answer? Taking when we ch- return at 11. Why are you doing that as Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> oh, who are these people that are Polish God. that don't know the difference? I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> yeah, no. Keep on talking. We'll see what hey, happens, why Eric. did you do that as... <laughs> Much like the yeah. criminal in this story. You're not learning your lesson, Eric. Yeah, why did you do that as Arnold Schwarzenegger? That's so weird. <laughs> Now you now you're being uh, Byron Allen like oh I hear you I hear you uh, so uh, you go bowling a lot is that correct <laughs> Well, yes Mr Allen it's so weird you did that in a Christopher Walken voice I don't know why you took go that. on with your story Slayton uh, he was he took a, one of the few jobs he could take with Roma- as a maintenance man for Romania's electric utility one of the few jobs available for a quote unquote class enemy after three months he had enough like fifteen thousand Hungarians from Transylvania that year. He decided to flee for Hungary. He told his family, putting a loud record on to cover their voices, which might seem crazy. But they were being tapped. He had his uncle had recently been fined for singing a Hungarian folk song in his own living room. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's like they had the. Uh, Imagine you get, you get you're singing in the shower and then somebody just like comes and gets you. It's like they have what do you call it? What's that Amazon thing and it just listens to you? Oh, Echo. They have Echo in the did old days. Did you see that show South Park? What they did? They did a whole episode about the Echoes, and they put a bunch of commands because they they were talking to it in the show. Yeah. And so it set all their listeners like alarm clocks for four thirty in the morning oh and my. ordered like like yeah ordered a bunch of weird shit. It was all just that they just punked that they they pulled. Wait, a prank. No, you mean through the TV? It really through did the it? TV. The South Park episode was talking about oh, the Amazon and Echo. And it worked? And it worked. And it made, it, it like, fucked everyone's oh, Echo they up. are genius. Oh, they're some of my favorites. I went to Google that. I don't know if that's true. It's a, yeah, go, yeah, please. <laughs> he rarely lies. As if, yeah. Say what I, you will I, about I this guy. I only lied to Shevsky, and that wasn't one of them. <laughs> what? No. Yes, you do. <laughs> they wished him luck on his dangerous journey. The Securitate, which is the name of the, the big police force, was notoriously violent. I thought it was a drink at Starbucks how, Romania. And how, oh, God. Can I get a large Securitate, please? Soy? Pumpkin <laughs> spice Securitate. How old is he at this point? Uh, like late teens. Jesus. So he, so he went in. He went into jail at sixteen. Did two years. Then did he's probably around twenty. Okay. Yeah, yeah. God, what a life he's already. I, it doesn't make you feel like you're like, man. My life uh, was pretty <laughs> safe and easy for that. I mean, I broke my ankle. Other than that, so Jesus. I'm not doing anything with my life yeah. compared to this kid. You could be a much better criminal, Eric. Trying to <laughs> trying to escape was difficult. Last year, on the orders of the Romanian president, patrols had chased a defector into Hungary, where they shot him dead. So yeah, they Shit. didn't they didn't like that. Attila, wearing everything he owned, rode a train as near as it went to the Hungarian border. 
There, he crawled through a cornfield and hid for days, unable to stand because the president had ordered them cut to three feet high, so they provided less cover. Eventually, what a paranoid fucking government! They're just all their whole job is just watching over people and fucking with them. Yeah. What do you? I mean, what do you think government's for? Uh, they're, they're there for fucking keep, yeah, keeping Pussy. the civic fucking world running, Mm-mm. keeping the water flowing, the fire department. They're coming. for keeping you as a cog in the machine, man. All right, that's what they're for. Calm down, Keanu. They're, so he's in a cornfield for three days that he yeah. ran backwards through. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that was, was also fun, a classic riff. That I, was the fun part. That yeah. wasn't the, uphill. That's yeah. right. Oh, uphill both ways. Condoms on the corn. Go on. He's just trying to escape. <laughs> Eventually, he spied a train heading for Hungary. Sprinting from the field, he jumped on a tra- on the train and hid below a car, hanging six inches from the ground as it sped towards his new home, which wasn't really much better than Romania. Attila had traded one communist country for another. Ugh. Plus, the Hungarian immigration office didn't exactly trust his story, flagging him as a potential Romanian spy. Oh, God. So wait, so hung- Hungary, okay, uh, just for Hungary, history Romania, lesson, our for us and our listeners, this is sure. for you guys, listeners, yes, and listen. for me. Yeah. I thought you said Hungary became Romania. So ch- no, big Transil- chunks of it. No, oh, Transylvania, Transylvania yeah. became Romania because yeah. Romania ate it up. Transylvania had been ethnically Hungarian for centuries and had been part of the of Hungary or the Austro-Hungarian Empire off and on since okay. since for, for centuries. Okay, so Hungary still exists. Yeah, Hungary still exists. Transylvania just doesn't exist. Now it's Romania. Well, Transylvania totally exists, just now it's... But it's, as, Ro- as a part it's like of Romania. It's a city now, right? It's just like it's, a, like it's a, a province. It's, it's sort of like if Orange County became Nevada. Oh, that'd be reason. funny. They'd probably love that. I'm, I'm part Orange County, and so I'm... But it yeah. would still be Orange County, just part of a different... Yeah, just be yeah. Orange County, Nevada. Yeah. Gotcha. Legalized right. gambling. More churches. Oh, joy. Uh, the the immigration office gave him a job. $150 a month at a factory and a bed in a policeman's dorm so they could keep an eye on him. By the way, this is in the 1980s. He's making $150 a month. Is that good? What does that mean? Equal. Slayton, you know how I like to do it. What's that? How much is that today? Well, I mean... Hundred fifty dollars is still back then. Like you could back then, a Game Boy cost a, cost a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or whatever. Wait, in the eighties it did. Yeah. Oh, so that's not good. It's money. not good money. So we're not going to impress our listeners. Like today, that would be six thousand dollars. No, no, he made. He was. This is poverty. This sucks. Okay. Yeah, he's not. A, he's not. Well, a, in a communist country. What do you want from yeah. him? You know, that's, that's, that sucks. Well, then things were provided for him then. Yeah, you know, like beatings and arrests. <laughs> but on his birthday, one free grand slop. <laughs> Yet he was happy. He was finally allowed to be the Hungarian. Grand slap slam. <laughs> the slap slam. So now he's finally Hungarian because he's in Hungary. He's, he's in Hungary. He can finally actually be. He can use his language without exactly. getting beaten. And okay, all right. He spent his breaks reading newspapers in his own language, which were filled with stories about UTE, Hungary's championship hockey team. Oh. Yeah, I thought that was some kind of urinary attractive. <laughs> that's right. I knew you were gonna go. <laughs> he's like, oh, that's oh. what that girl got last week when I was in Hungary. <laughs> extra, extra. Read all about it. Mom's uncomfortable. <laughs> I've been pisking blood. <laughs> Quote, I should not have had sex in that hot tub. Is that my borscht in the toilet, or do you have a UTE again, Moira? A Am t- I here just to watch you guys be silly? You're <laughs> that depends you, on perspective, Eric. You do whatever I, uh, you want to do, man. I'm, just trying, I'm just like seeing where this is going. <laughs> Look, we're just trying to get your... We rough. haven't even got to the story yet. Is that right? <laughs> we're, this we're, is the pre-story. Yeah, you're learning why he turned into the bad guy. Yeah, we, we don't just tell you a criminal commits crimes. We tell you why. Well, yeah. At this point, I, I'm, all, I'm. If he murders seven people, I'm like, I, I get it. Of yeah. course, he well, was in a cornfield for three days. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm in a cornfield <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Attila hated his job, so he spent what little money he had at a payphone and called the team offices asking Captain for the Obvious. manager. He hated his hundred and fifty dollar a month job. <laughs> Clayton, you used five extra keystrokes that you wasted calories there. Uh, we knew he hated that shit. When no the one man, needs to know. We knew he hated that shit. When the man came on the line, Attila said, "Hello, comrade. I'm Attila Ambrus from Transylvania. I'm a goalie, and I'd like a tryout." As it turned out, the team needed a backup in the net, so they said yes. But he's not a goalie. He's only loved hockey, but he... He right? played for like a minute in high school yeah. before he got kicked out. I guess you could say you're a goalie, but... Yeah. Uh, on a note, no one in Hungary said Crick Comrade anymore, and uh, uh, but they would describe his accent and dialect, because Transylvania had been kind of isolated for a long time. They described talking to him in Hungarian like it would be us talking to Shakespeare right now. Or, or oh, like it was hard to understand his, yeah. like, his, his whole style. Okay. Exactly. There was one problem, as Shevsky noted. Attila was terrible at hockey. His tryout went so poorly that players started a contest to see who could land the most shots on his face mask. Oh, wow. And that is funny. I don't know if either of you guys have ever played hockey, but when you crack one to the face mask, especially... This guy's like... 
I don't hate this guy. Like, no, he's I, funny I right now. Admire him, Adam Sandler you know? could play him in a, in a biopic. No, he's he's and he's Rudy. Transylvanian <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> Adam would be killer at this game. Yeah, I'm this telling is you. like I get it. Getting hit in the face. So with him a... making the team is like that scene in Rudy where he writes his father and he's like, I, he made it into the school. Right? Well, we're still at a shitty tryout. <laughs> the helmet was so cheap that the fourth. How shot cheap broke... was it? <laughs> <laughs> the fourth <laughs> shot broke his nose. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Yeah. 80s hockey masks were not that great. The 90s, man, they started. 80s good. communist Hungary hockey masks. Yeah, yeah. That's what I usually. I'm not talking about American like. or Canadian hockey masks. I'm talking about communist hockey masks. Come on. The, the manager blew the whistle, trying to wave Attila over, but the Transylvanian ignored him, staying in the net for two hours, playing like it was the Olympic finals. With, a, with blood coming down his chin from his nose. Yep. Fucking badass, this guy. They yeah. were so impressed by his tenacity, the team offered him a job as the third string goalie slash janitor. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's someone who wrote their own bio right there. Yeah, he probably, he probably got a raise. He was the only player to never miss a practice. He went so hard, the interior ministry gave him an ID badge so he wouldn't have to bother signing in at the hospital. Did it say shitty goalie on it? Yes. In, in Attila, Hungary. shit goalie. Hungarian hockey is a dangerous game, and I'm not talking about what happens on the ice. The fans are rabid. His first game against their cross-down rival, FTC. Oh, they'll kill you for, like, letting a goal, you know, call through, right? It's like soccer in Mexico these days, right? Yeah. Oh, my God, deadly. They've killed people for less. Right? <laughs> their first game against their cross-down rival was called off during the first period because the fans refused to listen when their own team asked them to stop throwing fireworks at the opposing goalie. Wow. Oh, my God. Fireworks? fireworks? Yeah. Melting the ice, first of all. And, and by the way, is there is there pay to play? Well, <laughs> you like, don't get killed. No, <laughs> this so, is pay. So all the rest of the players are actually, they have team salaries that are paid for by the state because it's a communist country. Yeah, but this guy's the janitor. He's doing more. Yeah, so he doesn't actually get paid as a team. His only pay comes from being a janitor. He's not actually paid as a member of the team. But I no. get the credit and the exposure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right? Oh, God. Yep. So was that janitor job pay more? Than the hundred fifty dollar a month job he already had. No, but it comes with. But it. But it <laughs> does. What? <laughs> Eric, there's no jobs. Is it, there is a pay scale there. The, the ceiling stops at one seventy five. I'm just get... saying this guy can't catch a break. Okay, go on. At their next game, he was beaten during a pregame riot before heading inside to make his only contribution. A driving... pregame riot? Like yeah. they're beating you before the game, the game even hasn't starts? even started. Yeah. Doesn't that make you think like LA fans are kind of pussies? In Russia, like, yeah. tailgate party is riot. We don't even show up till the half the first. First quarter, yeah. Much less beating somebody during oh, the yeah. pregame. I would have right. made the pregame. That's how you riot, warm up. Traffic. You don't so stretch bad. on cold muscles. You got to riot first, and then you stretch. I had to park seven blocks away, so I just, I was late. Sorry, everyone's arms broken. Okay, good. My leg is broken. Yeah, but how, I'm ready yeah, to play. How frustrating would that be? You know, you're late to the game, and then the goalie's already been beat up. Well, <laughs> I was that, pulled he, from game before game. He got game. his ass kicked and then went inside and did the one thing he does for games, which is drive the Zamboni. So, uh, Well, he had to clean up, too. He's also the janitor. I Imagine mean, you get your ass beat and you have to clean up, you know. Wouldn't hockey be better if the goalies actually sat on Zambonis and they just moved those around to block the net? Yeah, Come that on. sounds like a great idea. Every now and then, a hockey player would get ground up under the Zamboni. That'd now, be awesome. or to now we're cooking with gas. Uh, for his effort, he Did received... you write that or just say that? No, I just said that. Oh, very cool. Uh, for his effort, he received $120 a month and rent-free living in a broom closet. <laughs> Was that Bender from like, Futurama's uh, apartment? Yeah. He's a broom closet? Hungarian potter. Somehow, he kept his job. <laughs> like how I just I sped right past that one, too? You certainly did. And you'll pay for that so in some other riffs. Did he get his Hogwarts letter? Is that, 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 that the next part of this? <laughs> yeah. Well, he gets the letter. He's like, you know what? This is probably worse than where I am now To be, if, if my luck is going to hold up at all. Uh, so Great now, riff. He kept his job after drunkenly driving the Samboni <laughs> through a wall. He was evicted from his closet, so he moved into a former <laughs> horse. That's a funny statement. Yeah, I was recently this evicted is from like my the closet. Worst autobiography of someone. Yeah. He's... Okay. So all right. So he was he had a short lived hockey career. And oh, he's still on the, he's still jan- on the team. Janitor. Okay. So then he got kicked. He gets kicked out of his broom closet, mm-hmm. and now he's living where a horse used to live. Uh-huh. So he's in some sort of barn. There's so, walls now. Hockey like door in some wintry Hungarian. Totally normal lifestyle. They made a floor. They built a floor for him. Okay, so then now, all right, we'll go. He has Continue. a floor. I mean, that's pretty good. Nothing's that weird about this for Hungary in the eighties. <laughs> Apparently, for not. us, we're freaking out. But for these guys, this guy's not even going, twenty yet. It's crazy. He's get, he's writing home to his mom. He's like, nothing really to tell you about. It's all been pretty honky dory. Right. He didn't even have any. How can he write? Yeah. In nineteen eighty nine, over a quarter million people gathered in the center of Budapest to celebrate the end of communism. Not Attila. He was across town digging graves to make enough money to pay the rent on his barn. Oh, Did he use God. a hockey stick to dig the graves? Hopefully. So he's not making enough money as the janitor and then, you know, third string hockey player. Nope. Now he's got to dig grave. Yeah. 
It makes you strong in the deltoids. It makes you shoot the puck harder. Yeah, it's just, it's just like a normal workout. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right. Here he was in Hungary where life should be better, but he lived in a barn with no hot water and worked as a janitor for his own team. So he shaved his country bowl cut, quit his janitor job, uh, which was a problem because he didn't have a salary as a player. So luckily, one of the star players sent him up with a job as a live-in apartment superintendent. They let him stay on the team even though he quit as a janitor? Yeah. Oh, that's a good lesson for people. Well, because he, cause he, now so he goes up to management. He's super he, – he, he is the team's Rudy. Like, every single practice, if you go into the book, like, every practice, he's grabbing people by the neck and, like, yelling at them for not playing hard enough. Oh, yeah. He's got that big C on his jersey. Yeah, he's the – captain, ma- not cunt. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Mom. Yeah, no, he's just a maniac, and the coaches like having him there because he makes everyone work ten times harder. That's and great. he just and he and if they if they said you're not on the team anymore, he just show up the next day anyway. I'm inspired. All yeah. you've done with the stories inspire me. Yeah, you should and tell be. me about a guy who steals for his rabbits. I mean, I'm inspired. Somehow he landed a girlfriend from a wealthy family Uh-oh. to it's impress about her to get good. Wait, he, that's just a lot of skipping over. I mean, there's a whole section where like there's gotta he, be like eight episodes of like this romance. Eric, you know I mean, we, this is a CW show waiting to happen, <laughs> and you're just gonna gloss over it just with somehow he ends up with a rich girlfriend. He moved into this apartment one of as a super. One of the ladies who lived there took a liking to him and eventually set him up on a date with some girl he thought might like him. So this guy's dirt poor and has a shit life, but, but he's, he's charming. He's, I was gonna say he's charming. Is he good looking and Very strong? Very good looking, yeah. Okay, so he's like, gonna be fine. Yeah. That, it, every every you're folder right. should always say, "Is this person good looking?" Yeah. yeah. Do they have good hygiene? Yep. Then they're probably going to be fine. I mean, he has horse paddock hygiene, so whatever that comes down to. Yeah, he's not bringing her over like, you know, hey, this is my, you know. Well, now he's in the apartment. Do so you literally cool. want to have rolling hay? <laughs> oh, God. That's, that's all I've got. I don't have bed. Tempur Pedic not invented. What? <laughs> kill me, this guy. <laughs> Listen, buddy. This is an improv school for many of us. All right. <laughs> to impress his girlfriend. <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He bought her a new gift every week, including a tennis racket and an electric knife. That's He's buying gifts? Yes. Electric guy, knife's a cute gift for a woman. He wasn't making any money. He finally starts to get a little cheddar, and he's spending it on some girl who has money? Well, he took more uh, odd jobs. He worked every day from 5 a.m. to 11 at night. Okay. Electric knife in the 80s in Hungary. This is, this is pimping. Yeah. It's like like an iPhone 7, iPhone 8 situation. He's, now, we haven't even got... Okay, so this is a lot going on. Yeah. But none of this is too horrible yet. Not like, yet. No, you're right. This isn't his... Like, I need a Batman origin story. Like, That's when, what, when do his parents get killed and he has to, like... What do you mean? Like, when he gets arrested at seven years old for climbing a tree or sent to a gulag for two years? Touche or, on Slayton. That's you know. pretty good, Eric. I <laughs> That's mean, so weird. That was no, some good origin. Call, yeah, but he's recovered. He's got a murder. Yeah, but he's got a whole team who loves him. He's in, he's the inspiration of the team. Now he has a great girlfriend I, who he's I, buying gifts for. He so, sounds to me like he's already recovered from Eric, his shitty, shitty pre-childhood. We don't yeah. want to have to get the bailiff in here to calm you down, but let me just tell you something. I have a feeling some bad stuff's gonna happen soon. Don't don't don't. I've done this show long enough to know something's probably going to happen. Something's bad. brewing. Yeah, something's brewing. Remember, he's also working from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. Just yeah, to yeah, 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 Kill yeah, any yeah. of us. For, wait, 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 wait. That's by choice. Sure. So, he's trying. To- so he's okay. He's he has purpose. He's, he, he's, he's on working, that struggle. No, he's working to pay his rent and, and and give shit to his girl. Yeah. He has purpose. I don't see him turning to crime yet. Something yeah. has to yet. happen. Things change. Yet. Well, let's hear. I want yet. the year to change. Things change when he joined the family on a ski trip to Austria, Here where the go. innkeeper noticed his rough demeanor. Here we go. When the man learned he was from Transylvania, he leaned in and whispered, can you get me some pelts? Attila looked around and noticed the walls were covered in fur and replied, why not? Oh. And so Attila became an animal pelt smuggler, ferrying rotting skins 850 miles from Transylvania to Austria. This guy, this guy just like, he just takes on projects, man. He's, a, he's on that hustle. Wait, wait, he's on the phone like with if, someone? If he was alive today, I'm... he'd have like eight podcasts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he'd be doing fine. He, I, we, we're not to the end of the story. He might be alive today and doing well. He probably Something sells his might. paintings and pelts. Wait, so is he on the phone with this guy? And he says, can you get me some pelts? No, there he's, he's in the guy's, no, he's he's in the guy's the, restaurant. He's on a... A, a trip with his girl and the family. You paid attention, but Jesus I'm confused. Well, I'm confused because the guy is asking your for show help. and you're not fucking paying attention to the story. Eric, if you listen to the show regularly, you know I'm pretty much always confused. Which we know Eric does. <laughs> He's yeah, a big he fan. He's a big fan. He asked to be on the show so many Can times, I tell you and something? we finally relented. I'm right? knee deep into this story, and you're fucking it up. Okay, right? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> he sorry. Was, he was on the ski trip to to, to yeah, Austria. I got that. The innkeeper at the rest at, at the at the place asked like, about who pelts. was already nefarious. You said he you said he looked around and saw the pelts and said. No, oh, this innkeeper saw that he was from, he has some rough demeanor and probably felt like he had some criminal element to him. Sure. And he wants some illegal pelts. 
And, so then, and so when he got when he got done with the vacation, he went and got pelt. No, yes. he convinced this guy. They probably had a little talk while the you know the chicks are off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Getting the croissants family's or like doing something, and he's like, you know, I can get you some pelts. You I've, know, I've noticed that I, that you like fur. Yeah, I can do something for you. Okay, so then what happens? Let's go. So, uh, where the shit was I? So he was a well connected teammate. Helped him buy a used car from the Interior Ministry. A little extra cash made them forget to remove the official government license yeah, plates. Yeah, so he's bribing people. Rolling official. This guy's like, he's got help. He's people very like him. conscientious. He's you know. Is he still a hockey player when this is happening? This, he's not, he's still on the team. He's still on the team. Okay. He's still he's still an unpaid third string hockey goal. Still fun. I'd still do it. Does he have to go to, no, no, does he have, I wonder if he does he have to go to practice? Yeah, he he never oh, missed. Yeah, he, he doesn't miss a practice. Okay, so he goes. A, Eric, practice. are you not listening to the story? Oh, I swear to God, I will punch you, you in your face. Do you see how it feels? <laughs> do you see what it does to you inside? It's gonna turn us into criminals. No, I I'm we're finding out no, information. No, I know. I'm, I'm just His teasing. first drive to Romania took ten hours. Half because the road was often blocked by horse-drawn carts, and half because he had no idea how to drive. Oh, Jesus. He left Transylvania with one bearskin, head included, stuffed in his trunk. A few months later, he returned, this time driving the hockey team van. Oh, now, he stole the hockey team no, van? No, he just he used it. legitimately borrowed it, but then filled it. How much fur you can fit in that van? It's no <laughs> pun intended. We get a lot of sex on these tours. Instead of a measly oh, 120 a month, he now profited around $1,600 a trip. That's well, I mean, that's, that's a come up. First of all, yeah, that's a fucking. That's even good for now. Fortune, yeah, yeah. yeah I do that. You get an apartment. You, in you, West you go LA. from one fifty a month to sixteen hundred a trip. I mean, that's exactly what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. With uh, your advertisers for the that's podcast, right. <laughs> I'm trying to go from one twenty a month <laughs> to sixteen hundred. Attila suddenly had more money than he knew how to spend. But that didn't stop him from blowing through all of it. Of course. A new car, nice food, and rounds of drinks for his friends, plus lots and lots and lots of gambling. He oh, once lost every God. penny along with his stereo what TV and VCR over a week-long billiards contest with a teammate. All right, so he's got a gam- There's There we go. Now we started. He's got a vice. So many stories have a gambling addiction. He Some of them it, literal he, gambling He spends addictions. a lot of time in like the local casinos. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, he's like uh, He's a good fella. Knight. But everything was still pretty great until here, here we go. His border guard contacts called and told him they had all been fired because a trucker had been shot, maybe because he refused to pay the bribes. Either way, Attila's smuggling business was done. It was 1991, and he was again destitute. Wow, 91. Mm-hmm. Jesus, that was just out of high school. Was that yeah. the fall of the Berlin Wall? No, did that around there? Yeah, I think that was like 89. Yeah, 89. 89 yeah. yeah. So Attila decided it was time. To rob the local post office. Wow. Okay, this is making the jump. I, yeah, this is this reminds me of the Anakin Skywalker turn. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, it just doesn't seem. He's ma- suddenly angry. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. That this doesn't make. So he loses. Okay, wait. Well, he, Here, he no, lost no, no. His, I, you know what? Wait, wait. I get it. Lay it down. Sixteen hundred dollars. You know, so he's probably making like three or four grand a month. You know. Yeah, about right. And he's you know he's got the hockey, he's spending all his money, and then and then. All that stops because of his gambling, and then the border people are gone. He so loses now his connection. He loses everything. So, so just he, stops. So he needs quick a quick fix, and this is the choice he that makes. Life, he's got that lifestyle. He's got a going. lifestyle now. I'm sure he doesn't have a penny saved of it. I yeah. know his girl's probably like swimming in like real fur that he, you know. Yep. So go ahead. all right, go. Everyone in the country paid bills at the post office in cash. He wouldn't be robbing people, but the greedy government. Plus, there was no security, no cameras, and no alarms. Mm. It's 1991 Hungary. There's not much shit going on. <laughs> That's what I always say. He bought a wig, oversized shoes, and a fake gun from the Four Tigers Chinese flea market. Okay, so was he going to do a clown show? Was he? <laughs> like, Obviously, you've never oversized... robbed anyone with a fake gun, Eric. I mean, <laughs> what are the oversized shoes? Like, at what point? Because when they look at your shoe print, his, they're his, like, his... a man wearing size 14s. Well, oh, it's time for my pre heist pump for, up you know, music. I got it. Dun, 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 no, no, dun. what he just said makes sort of sense. It I could be wrong, though. He shaved his beard, leaving just a mustache. He drew a diagram of the post office, and then he got very, very drunk and practiced yelling threats at the mirror. <laughs> the you talking to me version of a, yes. from a Hungarian <laughs> criminal? No, he's like going, get out! <laughs> <laughs> now put the <laughs> money! <laughs> I want stamps. I want packages. I want money. Nope. Six probably like, nope, too harsh, too harsh. Everybody get down. <laughs> Imagine walking in on a real on a real criminal, like looking in the mirror, like just getting ready to do their thing. Yeah, it's like everybody in this post office, sit down. <laughs> Honey, what are you doing in there? <laughs> Nothing, bitch. <laughs> okay. It's like, I'm too harsh. 
<laughs> we need another electric knife. So is that how he got caught? It was because well, he lives probably it's probably thin walls and somebody's like he sounds like he's practicing. Yeah, the neighbors are reporting him like there was a time when he was yelling. It sounds I feel like he wants to rob the post office. <laughs> He says their names. <laughs> it was 3.30 in the afternoon when he stumbled drunkenly out his door towards his target. Uh, that's your he, first oh, mistake. Guy. He entered the post office drunk. as the last customer left and yelled, This is an armed robbery! The ladies behind the counter were more annoyed than scared. <laughs> he pulled out a small duffel, ba- duffel bag yeah, with Joe Camel shoes. on the side. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, I guess Flip Charlie Chapman's robbing us. Someone <laughs> just know. go about just That's ignore why, him. Well, he's already stumbling because he's <laughs> drunk, and then he can't even, his shoes don't even fit properly. <laughs> They're like, just this ignore him. He's a bad comedian. <laughs> <laughs> he had them fill it with cash from the tills, then he told them not to move and went outside, barring the door with a cheap combination lock. As he slowly walked away, the ladies opened the window and yelled, <laughs> Robber, catch him. Oh, God, it's like vaudeville, dude. Yeah. Uh, dude, they just yeah. popped out a different hole. You just hear... <laughs> Attila ran, Ooh, ditching his wig yeah. as he rounded Those the corner. hot Romanian uh, bank chicks running around without their tops on. <laughs> uh, I think Benny Hill is offensive to me in this day. Yeah. Oh, I don't even damn. know how that was on TV. Welcome to the SJW podcast. What do you mean? Women could only, could only watch TV if they had their husband's permission back then. Like God intended. <laughs> Oh, the good so, old days. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm moving to Tehran, where women are treated how they're supposed to be treated. Go on with your story, you bitch. Attila didn't <laughs> stop running, even when he pulled out a disposable raver, razor and shaved <laughs> A disposable his- <laughs> raver? <laughs> Which yeah. they all are, to be honest. So don't throw that one away. His Mickey Mouse clothes are still good. Now, he pulled out a razor and shaved his mustache while he was running away. That's awesome. That's right? hilarious. I've never ran and shaved before. Let's no, try it, man. I can't, I can't even remember. Can you imagine cutting your lip? That'd be like- a cool sport. No. Shave running, shave running, run yeah. shaving. Is that an Olympic event? Yeah, yeah. You, like they start. It starts off easy, like just like your, just like just your sideburns. Oh, but eventually, he's, he's, people he's, are doing their balls. He's like he's pulling, <laughs> out, he's pulling out a one blade. I've never <laughs> seen this before in the competition. You know? They still have the gun, the, the pop gun. They go and like that, and they're off. <laughs> Chefsky's cut his nutsack. He's out. He's going for the balls. <laughs> <laughs> what are the rules? Like you, if any blood, you're out. Like, oh right? yeah, any for cuts? sure. There's like a javelin no, thing, the, or like where you launch yourself and then you have to get your taint while you're in the air, and then you land <laughs> oh, in the sandbox. Oh, come on. This is genius stuff The, here. the blood is like the splash when you're doing the Olympic diving. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, no blood at oh, all. Oh, there's ten. blood on his yeah. chin. Oh, just a little bit. Disqualified. He was so close to making it. <laughs> Judges. Okay, so he's running away with, his, he, with the bag of money, he runs clown the, shoes, yep. and now he's shaving. Yep. Here is drunk. a trophy yes. made out of pubes. Drunk. You know, you know what doesn't make any sense. What's huh. up? Okay, here's a kid everything. Who, who had everything. 150 bucks yeah, a no, month. It's not even just that. Beautiful wife. He was like conscientious and like he made all these d- choices yeah. that like even if it was a criminal. And why? Why this choice? Big shoes, shaving. That robbery sounds like he's trying a, to throw him off, man. I think he's just he's given up. Is what I hear. Yeah. Uh, well, when he finally looked in the bag, he had 548 thousand Hungarian forints. Which is the equivalent of five thousand nine hundred dollars. So it was worth it. Yeah. Now he just needs to do that every month, and he'll be. Days later, he did it again and got seven thousand two hundred dollars. Oh, there wow. you go. No the, one caught him yet. I the take the from opening? his first two. Well, again, I cannot stress enough how little infrastructure Hungary has at this point. Yeah. There's no no one has alarms or cameras, and we're about to hear about one more reason why uh, he's not getting caught. Okay, go on. His take from the first two robberies was more than seven times the entire monthly salary. Of the 14-man police squad t- assigned to catch him. Yeah, they're like, fuck this. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's like the Thomas <laughs> Crown affair. They're like, you know what, whatever. Just I got more important yeah, they, things they, to do. You know, they're, they're sitting around the police office, police station going, how much did he get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, I'm in the wrong business. Well, that's actually a big problem with Hungarian police force is as, the, as communism fell and the economy was unstable, half the police did leave to become criminals. Because it was way it, the pay that's was a rule way for any government. You want your cops to be on your side. Make sure you pay them a little bit more than poverty. At least give them a good pension. Uh, it's one thing you can't pay them like Pablo Escobar, but I mean, give them enough to where they want to do their job and they can support their family. Give them some patriotism, patriotism dollars. You know, so this union guy over here. I'm not. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a political man. I just have some philosophies. Okay, so the police aren't trying to do anything for him. Major Lajos Varju led the anti-robbery department. And by lead, I mean regularly took them to get drunk at McDonald's. The t- yeah, McDonald's in Hungary. Yeah, yeah. it's well, the only they're place serving he- beer at McDonald's. Well, so also a, a big what? thing. Yes. Well, first of all, yes, and secondly, yes, because <laughs> this place sounds. Mar- 
marvelous. So when communism <laughs> fell, a I bunch can of rob uh, whatever I want. Like, yeah, can, I a, can, I, can I get a chicken McNugget meal with a Bud Light? <laughs> Is that how you, you order? <laughs> Hold the chicken McNuggets. Just uh, five of those meals, though. <laughs> Bud Lights. Um, when when communism fell, a bunch of American companies moved in, mm -hmm. and so a bunch of money starts getting generated, but none of it's staying in Hungary. So basically, the right. rich criminals are shopping it at Western-owned businesses that then ship the money back over to America. Oh, so makes sense. what a country! The team included men like Lajos, dance instructor Sarahs, who taught ballet in his spare time, and sometimes should have showed up to his police job in a tuxedo and top hat. So he's actually a dance instructor, or is that like his like mobster name? No, you know, no, like he, no, he, big, like he, big pussy he's, or. He's passionate into he would leave his ba the ballet classes he taught and sometimes come still dressed oh. for ballet i thought it was like some good thing like he danced over dead bodies and when he kills somebody they call him the dancer yeah the dancer <laughs> and you've like, been taught you've way. been taught <laughs> and tibor vaji whose propensity to ruin their three squad cars earned him the nickname eggy rakas senfej this guy's got a nickname this is my whole point how come this guy's got a nickname, but the dance guy doesn't have a nickname? No, that's his nickname. Well, he just he has, has a literal a, nickname. His nickname is Dance Instructor. And they're okay. like, oh, yeah. why? Because he dances on dead body? They're like, no, he's also dance No, he's instructor. actually a real dance instructor. Yeah. And then this other guy's got a nickname because he does... Uh, well, his nickname loosely translates to Mound of Asshead. Oh, he farts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's the car crasher? Yeah, the car crasher. Mound of Asshead. Within I love days, other countries. They've within days, the crack squad had arrested the wrong man. So, and they took him to McDonald's for his punishment and gave him six chicken McNuggets and some beer. <laughs> Go on your way. Don't do that anymore or we'll take you back to McDonald's. <sighs> While the police tripped over themselves, Attila booked his first vacation, taking his girlfriend on a romantic trip to Tunisia. Oh, the fuck on. Yeah. So after all this, he's how many robberies has he done at this he's point? He's done Just two. two. Just the two so far. So he does the two robberies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time major, for a break. You know, yeah, the major crime squad over there is like the horrible Law and Order episode. Yeah, they're not doing anything about it. So mm -hmm. he goes, you know what? I'm gonna take my girl on a trip. So he's back. Does he? Does he oh, like, he's back. To me, I'm considering him back. He, there was a lapse with yeah. the shaving and the bi and the big shoes and the getting drunk. So he's back. He's but got that's his how girl. he got the money. That the shaving and the big I, shoes. No, I get and the it. Drinking. I get it. Even he, if it, he's on his way on vacation, where'd he go? Yeah. To Tunisia. But when they arrived, the accommodations were shockingly worse than described by his shady travel agent. So when they returned... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. He used a travel agent? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. This guy's... I, <sighs> There's only been a small window of time in history that travel agents were useful, and this what, was when. It's, it's yeah, the but, 80s. But why would you have... It's like, the 90s, 91. This place is already... They, they, don't even have a, they don't have a police force. Like, this doesn't sound like a place that a travel agency... Would so be that a is thriving a good point. business. That is a good point. I really you know I mean? swallowed that without thinking twice. You're right. <laughs> yeah, travel agency had yeah. an industry. Yeah, this is like, but I guess there's no like orbits. Well, or I just like wanted, hot, uh, hot There's no internet. Yeah, there's no internet or anything. So yeah. I guess you. Also, side note: all the cops were also travel agents. <laughs> yeah, uh, they had to make money somehow. One of them can be a dance business. instructor, but everybody else was a travel agent. Yeah, but who's got money to just like like how is that a thriving so business? The 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 people who have money are half of them are the criminals. And half of them are the ones who stout, who work for the government, which is essentially still criminal. Okay. Because uh, it, it's post-communist fallout. It is like North Korea. Boom. Except for better food, I think. Oh, that's true. Hungarian food, great. Although Korean food's amazing. So he was pissed yeah, off I about... I don't know about that. Korean barbecue is really good. Oh, that's God, South yeah. Korean, though. They're not doing Korean barbecue in North Korea. Yeah, even though they big buildings and it, it looks beautiful in North Korea. In North Korea? Yeah. Have you seen... Did you watch Vice? Yeah, did, have you seen... Yeah, I know, but... It looks you... like shitty DC. It looks like someone took... Some, like someone took DC and fucked it with the USSR, and that's what you have, and it's old and broken. Well, I mean, not from the sky. But oh, anyway, fair enough. Go on. <laughs> yeah, this garbage so, dump looks great from 5,000 feet in the air. Yeah, so it's his, filled uh, with people! So his um, shitty travel agent, who probably like told him, I, I can get you a deal. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he was he was so pissed off that when he returned, he immediately robbed the travel agency for $12,500. Uh, that is how you teach wait, a lesson. Wait, wait. Tell me, that's not a Yelp review this you won't I forget. I don't understand. You're telling me that the travel agency had more money in it than the place he robbed. Oh, yeah. Like, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Who the fuck is traveling? Because his travel agent, man or lady, probably had some sort of side crime business Yeah, this is own. like, he was, That's how you survive there. We you need either, to start robbing travel agencies. That's what I'm all about. Let's I don't think now he's got 12000 from the travel agency. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He's yeah. like, I got to start just robbing travel agencies. Well, also, ev every, Thanks, no one shit. pays for it. There's no credit cards. Everyone pays. Everything is in cash. Everything's in cash. I get yeah, it. There you go. I guess you have to. I guess if you're flying, you know, it's like probably expensive. So they, 
Yeah, but when does the airline get the money? Like, I don't understand how it. What is it? What did a travel agent? I think it's do like Wells Fargo. You know, they used, the, they used to have the horse and carriage. There were still travel. travel agents in this country until like the early two thousands. There's travel agents. There's still one. Now. Yeah, yeah but still, no, no one uses them now. It's for like okay. weird ass people. There's but a few like wealthy people business. that use them. There's a few wealthy people that use them. But yeah, they're yeah, because like, they, they get you like you know. I've used a travel agent when I went on vacation. I I I, I had somebody, but I would never do that again. Sure, I feel like I got fucked. Yeah, so you should have robbed them. Yeah, That's I know. The moral. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Well, about right now. It's like I gotta go back and rob this motherfucker. But anyway, what kind of gun would you use, Eric? I just want to picture you robbing somebody. I don't know if I would use a gun. I would want interesting question. Hair dryer? I would want to do that kind of thing where like, like it's at night and like I got the codes and. I stole them without them knowing it was they me. They drop you in Mission Impossible style? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just in the air ducts. You know, I want to do it like that where they, they, they wake up like, we've been robbed. What happened? And I leave like a calling card, like a like a mustache on the wall oh, or something yeah. like or that. Or the Griffin. Oh, yeah. dude, the Griffin. <laughs> You've been had by the Griffin. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't probably use my name when I'm robbing but people. But that's the last place they'd look because they'd just, be like, he's he never used his shot. real name. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to use my real. He's like, oh, this guy... He, the real, uh, real this guy's a fan of the dude from Workaholics, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get out of it, you know. I just leave, use I leave a Workaholics DVD as my calling and, card. And the wrong shoe size, they'll never find you. Lajos Robbery Squad didn't learn about the theft for hours. Which the, theft? The, the, the travel, travel agency theft. Just, well, because the travel agency didn't want to let people know. Oh, no, no, that's not the problem. Oh. Uh, it happened only a few blocks away from the police, f- f- from where they were, because they were in a pub. <laughs> so that's why then, because they were just getting shit-faced during the day. That's the why cops were? Yeah. Yeah, because what are they going to do, cop? <laughs> the press loved this new robber, describing him as a good-looking dandy who, after grabbing the money, wished the office manager all the best before kissing her on the hand. Oh, that would be illegal these days. God, have an know. article in that Variety be- about that one. Yeah. <laughs> Kissed her on the hand, huh? You're going down, perv. <laughs> Unwanted sexual advance. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do? He kissed me on the hand. Attila awful. brought his cousin, Laszlo, on the next job, who was so scared that the victims laughed at him. Still, they netted $32,000. From where? Uh, I think there's another post office. Jesus, what's going on? This with guy, the fucking post this office. Guy That's where everyone off. pays their bills. It's just full. There's he, only like six places in these towns, you know? It's yeah, a communist yeah. country. There's nothing yeah, exciting. So how do they not find him? Well, it's Budapest. It's actually not that small. Uh, what I'm saying is like... Never mind what I just said. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, a, pretty ma- it's a pretty about. major Eastern European country. There's answers to both of our questions. He told Laszlo not to spend any of it for three weeks to avoid suspicion. Of Laszlo course, promised... Yeah, just like, like, what was that movie... Uh, with De Niro and uh, Heat, any heist movie Heat. ever? No, not the Heat. The, one, no. the old school one where, uh, you know, Joe Pesci. Casino. Casino. Goodfellas. Goodfellas most, or Casino Goodfellas. was about like yeah. Most, oh, Goodfellas, where he robbed the, the thing and he was like, "Don't buy anything," and the oh, guy yeah. has the Cadillac and the, yeah, oh, yeah. That's how most robber people who like deal in money crime, how most of them go down. Over and over again, we yeah. find these people breaking that rule. It's crazy. It's like that would be like a Buzzfeed. This one yeah, rule. But the fucking point of. Robbing is so you can buy shit you can't afford. Imagine sure. like you, you know. I agree. Oh God, don't get You're me like, wrong. You're we, preaching we the crier. We talked about this the before. Pro- <laughs> the choir and the crier. I'm very sad. Oh man, don't get me it. wrong. Please just hold it. Preaching keep to the shots. crier. That's a Freudian slip. You're preaching to the crier. Yeah, that's what I'm making sense. This. Laszlo showed up the next day in a brand new Jeep. This motherfucker. Uh, Attila yelled at him, then went and bought a super Bro, what are you Eclipse. doing? Well, fuck it. I might as well do it, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah, cover's bro, and I'm getting a Bentley. He, he probably he got mad, and he was like, I got a deal. <laughs> now that he had a partner, it was time to try robbing a bank. Laszlo's job was to distract the security guard, which he did by actually fainting. How's there any money in the bank? All the money's at the fucking travel yeah, right. agency in the in the post office. The like, called, what's in the bank? Like, you know, the bank calls in to borrow money. Hey, <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah. we're a little scant. <laughs> the next day, Laszlo drove back to Transylvania, and Attila turned back to post offices. And by the fall of 1993, Attila had pulled off six of the 13 major robberies in Budapest that year. Wow. He was rich and happy. Until he found a naked man in his girlfriend's closet. That's it. Okay, he, there. I'm there just it renting is. it, bro. No, no. Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a plausible. <laughs> Don't they rent? Yeah, he's no, like, oh, yeah. I rented closet too. But there it is. This uh, is it right here. Oh yeah. This is it. This nice. is I shit. was waiting. All this shit that has happened, I'm okay with. I'm like, I get it. The I clown get shoe it. robber. Like everything. 
this is the moment. And you she's, know? she's just like, you, all you pay with attention our, to is your robberies. When R. Kelly's in the closet, this mm-hmm. is it right here. Seven o'clock. You never in the take morning, me out. Rays from the sun wake me. That's yeah, how you should have done this whole thing. I used to know the whole thing. So you should have done it. You should have done this. You should do a podcast in R and B form one time. Stretching and yawning in a bed that don't belong <laughs> to me. All right. God, you're so white. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say you're so not white, but yeah. uh, I guess you can't please either of us. Uh, yeah, I, that is the whitest thing about me is liking R. Kelly. You're absolutely right. <laughs> no, it's just really in a liminal spot now. Neither oh, of us are willing to accept Wayne you now. Over there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne and Newton, this and guy? Right. Bed that don't belong to me. He threw the man still naked into the street and got very, very drunk, then proposed marriage. The next, what? The next morning, he dumped her. You don't, yeah, was, yeah, I would hope so. When he sobered up, yeah. He decided it was time to show her, to show everybody that he could be the best. So he turned his apartment into a home base of operations with it's his a woman, oven so. acting as the safety deposit box for all of his cash. But he can't cook anything. It, he didn't really care. Oh. He stopped bringing women home after one of them tried to turn it on. But he removed the knobs just to be safe. He stopped. That's hilarious. Right? Like, why is she trying to turn the oven on anyway? She wanted to make him something nice. Well, she, so she was going to preheat don't the oven. Don't touch that. No, 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 don't touch that. <laughs> she was like, I need to preheat the oven. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you casserole. Yeah, I have a slop casserole recipe for my grandmother. Uh, you want a slop slam? <laughs> <laughs> I am so sick of slop. I'm calling Domino's. <laughs> yes, you want a two slop pizza? Ah! <laughs> I hate this country. <laughs> he stopped buying cheap wigs from the Four Tigers Chinese flea market, switching to a high quality shop. He stopped going out with the team, instead using every night to, ch- to case the entire city of Budapest. He measured travel times from every police station to every financial institution. Oh, dude, that's genius. Crossing off the ones that were too close. That way you know. Wait, first of all, let me just back up here. Yes, sure. So, like, you're a teammate. You know, this would be like you guys, you guys are doing this podcast. Yeah. And, like, all of a sudden, he shows up. You know, in a Ferrari. Yeah. You know, and then, but then, then First, you, and then you hear, that'd be awesome. Then you hear about like robberies and stuff. Like it's like, you know, he don't make any money. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I, I very much know. Like so, I'm saying no one, <laughs> and no one that knew this guy questioned it all. Like, hey, I wonder why he's getting this money from. He's the janitor of they, the team. Well, they like, all did. So everyone must have known that he was the guy. They thought, they didn't know he was the robbery guy. They just thought he was working for organized crime, which was okay. a normal side got hustle it, for it. Hungary in, in the early 90s. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. It, it was, was like, like, it was it was like the Postmates or Uber of like, 1993 yeah, right. Hungary. It didn't stick out as odd. It was Imagine more they like, had oh, commercials it's like for robbing, you know, yeah. like the Uber commercial. Get your side hustle That's on. Right. <laughs> Offering a $500 bonus for robberies this month. Uh, he raided every target from a one stealing candy from a baby to a five full on Ocean's Eleven. Most of the banks on his list rated a two. Uh, eventually, he tried. Well, what does that one equal? If it's two, not candy like, or like, oceans. So one is su- one is like it's too easy to rob this place. No, it's I know insane. that. Insane. Five is su- is hard. I was just looking for the quirky name. No, there's no fun name for it. Uh, I don't know, like beating up a kid for his lunch money. There you go. Okay. That sounds that sounds nice. Okay. Eventually, he tried a three and walked with forty two thousand dollars. Dang. Wow. Yeah. So his his whole his whole casing out and figuring out like the distance well, worked out I, well. I will I will say one thing for this guy. It's sure. like the pelts, it was sixteen hundred. You know, then he robbed the post office, f- five thousand, seven thousand, yeah. yeah. Then he thirty two thousand. Then he was like, Oh, we gotta go to the banks. Now he's up to sixty four thousand. Yeah. Is, you know. This guy's working his way up. Yeah. He was pumped and he felt ready to try a five. Oh, a th- by the way, mm-hmm. by the way, yes. the, the, even even with the sixty thousand that's not a lot of money. Not like, for the risk of so, going into so jail. Like, so, like, like, let's say, what is this time frame? Is it over like six months? This time frame. Yeah, that's not a lot of money for somebody that's burning through money. Like five thousand dollars is not a lot of money. But think oh, of I it know. in context, where a monthly salary is like one fifty. Okay. So you put that in context. In a in a shit communist if, if country, if that guess it's a lot of money, not, right? If okay, you're not a complete right. maniac, which if you're a robber, you're probably a complete well, he maniac. Well, he had all this cash in, a, in, in, in his oven. Which, which Why did he have it in his oven? That's not even a well, lot because of... the interest rate there is phenomenal. It's like a good 6.5% return. Right. You almost, on, for a second you had me, I was like, it is? No, it's not. You on oven savings. Son of a bitch. <laughs> on oven savings? Yes, yes, you, yes. You're not on the oven plan? On the, on, no. chase, you're, not on, you're not on the GE I got a Chase plan? oven account. You're not on that oven? It's an app. That's like... That was the original Bitcom. Attila, Attila had one more strange habit before his robberies, being exceptionally drunk. On the morning of trying a five, his waitress thought it was strange that her customer, four shots deep into whiskey, was wearing sunglasses and reading the newspaper upside down while a wig slid <laughs> off his head. Classic. 
<laughs> Upside down newspaper. Yeah. He was nearly caught because of a silent alarm, but he lucked out when the cops ran into the wrong building. Wow. He so, well, so finally there's an alarm. Yeah. Th- th- after all After this, he's been robbing for like three or four years now. Somebody's like, you know what? We should probably get an alarm. <sighs> I guess we should. We got oh. a lot of money in this post office. <laughs> And that Attila guy's been robbing everyone blind. He arrived at home to find his apartment door open with two policemen coming out. Oh, fair. His heart dropped when they asked him, do you live here? Is there a problem, he asked. Yes, they replied. There has been a robbery. In oh, your apartment. Shit. We're worried about your stuff. The cops then pointed to his disheveled living room and said, I'm sorry to say it, but they've taken everything, even the knobs on your oven. Uh, and he just like smirked. He's like, oh, this is awful. Oh, dude. Like, oh. Uh, they didn't get the oven money. He's like, did they get the oven no, money? Get, no, no. They just thought like yeah. they, someone He's robbed just him. waiting for them to leave so he could check the oven. All right. Well, uh, I'll come down and uh, fill out some paperwork and do a statement. Uh, I'll get, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. And then he opens up the oven. Despite doubly missing the culprit, Lajos Varju's robbery squad caught a break. The bank had new surveillance cameras. They were surprised to discover that the robber looked just like Major Varju. A small revenge from Attila, who donned the disguise as payback when a paper quoted the major as calling him lucky. Wait, what? What just happened? I don't understand at all. The ro- the bank robbery he just did, the five, the, yeah, the, yeah. the level five. He dressed up to as, look as like as the, the the head cop the, who's the trying police, to, yeah. Lieutenant. And it worked. And they're like, oh, it's. That, well, they were all they all knew it wasn't him because they were getting drunk with him when it happened. Oh, but they were like, Dude, but they still, they still oh, right, didn't right, think right. they still, they're still not. It was, on it was kind of like a big fuck you to the to them for. Did you just flip me off? Yeah, because because I express what it was like. I to think be... of you as a major. That's what I think of you as a, as a you're you're the cop in this one. You're a real cunt. The let's see where the heck was I? The next day, the surveillance tape appeared on Hungary's top rated show, Criminalis, which was watched by forty percent of the country's population. Jesus Christ! Those are some that's fucking fuck ratings. Dude. That's when you know, like, well, there's probably like two states. There's like a communist station. And there's like the, you know, yeah, probably like two stations. I did, well, but that big amount of population that just lets you know, like, man, they must have been depressed. If like the everyone in the country is watching a TV show, you're like, don't you have somewhere to be? Go to the batting cages or something. Have a beer. Like, what the fuck? While Attila was robbing and stealing, conditions in the hockey league kept getting worse. Games were canceled because of broken zambonis and lack of lights. In the hockey league. <laughs> Well, that's how we rate the quality of a country. Eric. So, so, so wait, the money—the money, the money didn't get stolen. So he still got it. He, he still, still got he his still money. Flush, yeah. But like, who robbed him though? Someone just robbed. Someone just. We don't know. Someone was random. Or oh, were they targeting him? Someone was just burgling places okay, and okay. just another criminal. That's like, I'll never get caught. This is easy. Yeah. Right. By the way, we slid burgle in there, which made me very happy. Oh yeah, fucking fist bump. One team, despite being sponsored got, by guys thing? the word burglar, burgle just gets us word. off. Right. Oh man, it's so burglary. Bugarlery. Bugulery. 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 Say it with us, Eric. Bagulery. One more time. Bagulery. Thank that, you. That is kind of fun, right? <laughs> Thank you. That was a good time. You, it, just yeah, feels, you, it feels good coming out. He's trying not to Bagulery. enjoy it, but he likes it. He likes it. He's Love in- it. <laughs> One team, despite being sponsored by a refrigerator company, had to cancel its season because they couldn't afford to keep the ice cold. Oh, that's ironic. All right, especially in a country like that. Yeah. Whirlpool can't sponsor you? Eventually, so many players left for greener pastures that the team had no choice but to name Attila as the starting goalie. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk about living the dream. He's huh? doing it. You got your oven money, your hot girl, <laughs> and then now you're the starting goalie <laughs> After of this little probably Hungarian being a shitty team. goalie, too. Yeah. yeah. And, like, I'm, and oh. you know you suck. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? Some hockey experts consider Attila's performance in the 95-96 season as the worst in professional hockey history. Mm. In one six-game stretch, Dude, he let in 88 goals. <laughs> what? 20, yeah, how many games? 23 of them in a single game. How many games did you say? Over six games. He let in 88 goals, 23 of them in a single game. No one has 23 goals scored in a game. There's no. never even a combined 23 go- goals yeah. scored in a game. Are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. Their team. Uh, welcome to the, you know, this is what happens, bro. Yeah. This is what happens when you shouldn't be a hockey player. Oh, my God. Hockey's the kind of game where people, like, if someone gets six points or seven points, yeah, like, damn, that's that was a high-scoring game. Most stadiums were not prepared for double-digit scores. Oh, that's it. See? One team put up the ah. extra numbers in cardboard. <laughs> Another told the crowd to keep track in their heads. Oh, that's hilarious. The team went 0-11 before keep forfeiting the rest of the heads. season. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> Oh, Attila weird. went back to robbing, again making it on Criminalis, who loved his new touch of bringing the tellers a bouquet of roses before announcing his intentions. Attila made off with $65,000 and the growing adoration of the public. The show's host loved the thief was drunk at every robbery. 
giving him a nickname that would stick, the Whiskey Robber. Mm. Ooh, I like this guy. Petey, Smokey. Ah. His popularity soared after he and an accomplice robbed a bank by dressing as police and claiming they were there searching for counterfeit money. <laughs> Which might be the it's best so the best way to rob oh, anybody. Dude, it's so clever. I kind of want to try that right now. By now, Attila was feeling the heat. His disguised face was splattered across every newspaper and appeared weekly on Criminalis. Did it have a goalie mask on it or was it his actual face? Yeah, he actually wore his own jersey to every single robbery. <laughs> mm-hmm. After a robbery where they found <laughs> him. Sources say yeah. Jason from Friday the 13th. Why would you even believe? Like, What a good cover. You're like the worst goalie ever. You got to be famous for that. He, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like this his guy, jersey hangs from the stadium. See, the press got him. Look at that. There that's you go. How they do it. You've seen Batman and Spider Man. You know how it works. After a robbery where he found an empty safe, he decided to call it quits. He and his partner dumped all their supplies in a lake, and he bought a small townhouse in a quiet part of town, moving in with his newest girlfriend. They decorated together. She chose pink carpet. He mounted a shark's head on the living room wall. That's actually a cool color combo. Yeah, right. Just saying. Sharks have pink in their gums too, so kind of it'll. It compliments. It works. You're an artist. I get it. Right? A little blue or gray for their God. skin. That lasted until 1998. It sounds like the worst interior decorator ever. It's like, I don't I have cards. a little pink carpet, <laughs> and here's what you need, a shock head. <laughs> Eric, I don't have cards yet, but take my number down. Uh, if you need your place set up. You know, I got to say, I'm not, I, I, I understand the pink. I'm a, you know, I'm a little, little weirded out by the shark's head thing. Yeah. We're going to do a table made out of a uh, checkered. It's going to look like a 50s diner, but just for the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a neon green refrigerator for you guys. It's going to be fab. So he's got work. a new girlfriend, a townhouse, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. A townhouse. A townhouse. Yeah. yeah, two stories. And at this point, though, is he still living off his robbery money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he's done robbing. He's oh. done so robbing. So he's got his reserve of cash. He quit. Yeah, gotcha, he basically gotcha. retired. He quit the robbing. Now he's, but he's getting starting goalie money now. Uh, yeah, which is actually zero. They're not paying him to be the starting goal. Oh, jeez. Well, he's horrible. They still right. refuse to pay he's him. He's horrible. And he's, yeah. But is, he still, the jan- is he still the janitor? No, he quit that job for oh. to, to so be I thought a- he was still the janitor and starting goalie. <laughs> yeah. No. That'd be for great. a guy that harassed me for not listening once, my God, I'm just joking here. <laughs> everything, everything. Is great I will get whacked on this episode. This table, <laughs> hopefully not with a gun, but I will get smacked. Crime is a show about how Eric Griffin once murdered my friend John Chesky. <laughs> Can you just say whacked but, me over the head or something? No, that I no, get but killed. I would do it still. It would be like you know, I, you know he'd be sleeping and I would do, come, do, do, yeah, do, 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 <laughs> a zip line do, do, down do, on do, his do. bed and like. <laughs> for some reason, this guy went through the air conditioning vents of his apartment. That's so strange. <laughs> he leaves his card. You've been had by the Griffin in my mouth. We got another one, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens that somebody's listening to this podcast and they go, you know, this sounds familiar. We have a crime mimicker that does all our stuff and gets masks made of us. Oh, that'd be oh, so great. Oh, dude. I only, I, again, I implore our listeners, if you know anybody who's considering a crime or you are, go ahead and do it. Just make sure you like write a diary so that I have enough info to make a good story out of it. I encourage our listeners to read hey, the Slayton, stars. I go can, on with your story. I can, make, I can make you famous. Go on with your story. Kind of. <laughs> go on. This great life lasted until 1988, 1998, when he read the sports page and saw an article about UTE, his hockey team, with a roster his name wasn't on it. <laughs> That's how they fired him? Angry and depressed. Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio is going to play this guy. Oh, oh, he's sure. the only person they can. <laughs> Attila turned to his only cure, more robbery. Oh. But now he was sloppy. He robbed the same place three times in a month. Uh, Attila. He started to doing? linger. Yeah, he, he robbed it so often. That when he walked in, it was like cheers. They were like, Attila! Uh, <laughs> would you like your regular robbery table, sir? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's gone back. Oh, he's, he's, what do they call it? Fading away. Yeah. You're supposed to burn out, bro? At this point, he's like, how old is he now, though? Well, it's 1998. He was born in 67. So he's early 30s. Early 30s. Yeah, wow, okay. Jesus. Uh, He's done a lot for early 30s, right? Yeah, I mean... More than any of us have done. Yeah, right, man. He has a townhouse? I mean, Jesus. That's what I'm saying. The guy's got a townhouse. (laughs) Got a townhouse? That's all the works I have. He has a townhouse. He has a shark's head. Oh, yeah, the shark's head, too. He's got a a decorated townhouse. The guy's got class. I imagine, like, the kind of, like... This is, like, a a mafia kind of dude. Like, that tacky, like, Italian stuff from the 80s. But then this is a Romanian-Hungarian style. But still, like, the same thing. What, you don't have a shark head on your house? Like, a gold necklace and, like, a gold necklace and, like, a gray sweatshirt. He's probably like, so proud of it. He's got, and he's got like a... It's a, the first a, thing he shows everybody. He's got a wet bar. Oh, yeah. And he like brings people in, you know, it's my shark head. I picked out pink carpet. <laughs> he let me... Well, he left that girl. Oh, no. No, this is, that's his current girlfriend. That's the current girlfriend. Oh, the that's current not, girlfriend. That's, not the that's the one that keeps telling him. No, 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 but I'm saying I see him honey. leading this one too, though. Like, oh, he doesn't something, seem like... It's not yeah. going to work out well. You're yeah. a great Okay, so now he gets... How was he sloppy? 
He um, he started to linger, taking much longer than his allotted three minutes. Do you have to let it linger? Once he barely escaped a mob of a dozen <laughs> produce stand owners who gave chase. I didn't know he wasn't wow. the only one running after him with cucumbers. Beat yeah. him! He, Beat he, him he, down! He, he waited too long inside inside of one of these places. And when he went out the back door, because he waited so long, there were twelve like produce stand people who like threw vegetables at him and chased him down yeah. the street for a while. He's like, I was I not funny enough? He wasn't the only one to give into depression. Right. Major Lajos Varji resigned, tired of being blamed for his failure to catch the whiskey robber, despite having fewer resources than Barney Fife. How long's their relationship <laughs> been back and back and forth? Like has he been chasing him? Like it's five been a few. Years? It's been a. Oh, five he, or six it started years? in ninety one, and now it's nineteen ninety eight. Oh, so, so like seven years. Yeah. So they almost have like that romantic, like that's the cop trying to get him. He's the Batman criminal that keeps Joker. Away. Yeah. But Varji retired just a little too early, on January fifteenth, nineteen ninety nine. The robbers dawdled, and Attila's partner got pinched. The cops subjected him to a three-hour interrogation, which amounted to a beating from Officer Mound of Asshead. As Attila... Oh, Asshead comes back, see? Yeah. Yeah, he returns to the story. Finally, He's he, an important part. He finally makes it happen. Mm-hmm. Huh? This is during the Scorsese montage stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. we're like, or we see the door close, and we're like, what's going to happen? He's this, is, this, this is our four and a half yeah. in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> As Attila sped for the Romanian border... Rolling Stones are playing in the background. <laughs> the crowd at the UTE hockey game went into a frenzy. Not because of what was happening on the ice, but because they had just learned the news. Attila Ambrus, the worst goalie in history, was the famous whiskey robber. At the border, he was greeted by six armed guards. That night, Attila spent 16 hours detailing all 27 of his robberies. It went on so long, they had to find a second stenographer after the first quit because of hand cramps. Doom <laughs> How long was it? <laughs> <laughs> they took Attila to the local jail, a rundown old building with bars on the windows. Other than his... Uh, well, this guy's a hero at this point. Yeah, oh, he's he, a pop culture icon yeah. in, in Hungary. Oh, just wait. <laughs> Other than his daily interrogations, jail was a breeze. He got three meals a day, a radio, newspapers, and the respect of the other detainees who called him the king. They even let him sneak water bottles filled with whiskey into yeah, his cell. Like, this guy's got a townhouse. <laughs> Holy shit. I hear he has pink carpet, too. <laughs> the yeah, one guy that like, likes all the odds. Yeah. <laughs> Only two people in one townhouse? He has sink with water come through. It's amazing. The only, major, the only minor drawback was his cellmate, who introduced himself as killer and signed letters to his wife in blood. <laughs> oh, dude. How'd he get the blood? From his own body. Did he poke his finger? Yeah, he like nose? cut himself, and I, mean, I don't know if he picked his nose. That'd be funny if he did, though. I right? like that. It's really dry this time of year. To yeah, the public, Attila was a celebrity. Criminalis aired a special edition, an interview where the host presented Attila with a bottle of whiskey. Wow. In jail? In jail, yeah. Wow. wow. A third of the country tuned in to see a humble, charming, and apologetic criminal, and they ate it up. Even his victims came forward in his defense, one of them lamenting, quote, it's a shame we were hit at the beginning because we didn't get the flowers. God, this guy went viral. Wow. Oh, yeah. Before Huge. there was viral, Huge. he went viral. This is, is how it? he went viral. He could have like he could have should have capitalized on it. I, I can't believe the, the media turned it into where and the people like ended up being like, We love this guy. Well, because like, you have to put he in the context he was a criminal. That the government and their minds are the same as organized yeah, yeah. crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. robbing the government's ta- like the government's tax and building. Robin Hood. Yeah, hundred percent. What is the human race, guys? What are we? Eventually, a reporter convinced his old nemesis, Lajos Varju, to come to jail for a meeting. Attila was, of course, pissed drunk, but when he saw the major, he broke into a huge grin. They sat and, t- they sat and talked, Attila reminiscing like he was chatting with an old friend. Lajos was kind of annoyed, but he couldn't hate the charming thief. When the interview was over, he leaned in and quietly asked a question no one else could hear. Have you already figured out how to get out of here? Attila replied, of course. <laughs> wow. A week later, they put him in the courtyard to work out. Six minutes after, he was gone. Guards found a rope dangling from a fourth floor office. They rushed upstairs, broke down the barricaded door, and found the rope made of bedsheets tied to the radiator. Oh, the old bedsheets tied to the radiator. That works? Wow, bro. (laughs) When they picked up the phone to report the missing prisoner, there was no dial tone. It was was 89. (laughs) (laughs) They picked up the phone to report the missing prisoner, but there was no dial tone because he'd used the cords to make the last few yards of rope. Smart. Yep. (laughs) He almost deserves to get out. He passed the aptitude test. He works for Microsoft As a side note, he wasn't actually planning on breaking out. 
But when the prosecutors told him they were going to charge him with attempted murder because he sh- shot off a gun once during one of the robberies, he was like, if you guys charge me as a robber, I'll take it like a man. But if you try to put murder on me, I'm going to escape. And they just laughed. And he's like, fine, then fuck you. And then he escaped. So, because uh, he's like, uh, he's, he had like an honorable yeah, thing. Where an he's on, like, yeah. I was a robber, but he's like, I'm not. But I'm not, a, I didn't try to murder anybody. Oh, wow. The entire 2,000 person police force mobilized, but they had no luck. The oh, pe- they've grown over the years. Remember, it was only 16, now yeah. it's 2,000. Okay. Yeah, well, they, they still they, they just hang out at McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's just more McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> more, just we're drunk we're at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> we're running out of chicken nuggets. Police force, too big. <laughs> the people, of course, loved it. T-shirts and coffee mugs saying, I heart the whiskey robber, sold faster than they could be made. Fuck, I want one. Yeah, this guy, he, he he's probably mad he didn't capitalize oh, on all yeah. this. Right. A song by Hungarian rapper Gangsta Zoli called oh. The Whiskey Robber is <laughs> the like King. like Eric's reaction to just the name Gangsta Zoli. <laughs> you, never seen, uh, you never seen Jeezy in concert, bro? Oh, dude. Oh my Gangsta God. Zoli. It's, it's hype as fuck. Gangster Zoli. <laughs> Uh, I got to hear one of his songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, right now in the podcast, please play a Gangster Zoli you know, in we'll, the background. You know, I'm going to drop it at the, at the end of the show. We'll, yeah, you we'll have to on drop it. one in. The, the song Whiskey Robber is King got a regular radio play. Public opinion polls showed that between 80 and 90% of people were rooting for him to escape. The police were so upset they released a three-sentence statement. This is human stupidity. It was 27 counts of armed robbery. Full stop. 19 days later, the whiskey robber struck again. Well, I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. Now he's pissed. You made yeah. him mad. His popularity soaring, the cops are the only thing they could think of, and they started spreading fake news. Ah. First, they said Attila came from a rich family. Then, that he was a violent alcoholic. Nobody believed it, and nothing changed. Then, they started spreading the rumor that he was gay. This guy could just run for president. He, everyone loved him. Oh, sure. He probably should. Right? He probably really could, actually. He probably could, right? Really he's here it. now. Attila, come on in. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> Now they started spreading the, the rumor robber. that he was gay, and that was the That's last the straw yeah, for Attila. Yeah, yeah. He sent a package to his no lawyer. No way. I, bro, <laughs> yeah. bro, I I'm smash. a thief. Is it like, is <laughs> it like machismo, machismo? Yeah, he's like, I'm a drunk, but I'm not gay. Nah. Is it that bad to be called gay? I've been called gay so many times, I don't even mind it. Well. In, in 1990s. In people's defense. That's, no, that's what I'm saying. In Hungary, in Hungary you're like, and, no, and hell for, no. And just barely not communist anymore Hungary, it's probably kind of yeah. shitty. If someone gets mad about being called gay now in America, you're like, oh, you think it would be bad if you were gay, bro? He huh? said, no. so here are the rumors. He sent a package to his lawyer telling him to deliver it to the police. Then he drank an entire bottle of whiskey before right. robbing another bank. Of course. What is this thing with, oh, God. He was so wasted that the tellers laughed through the whole thing. He left with the only. They were like honored. They're like, I'm part of the like, robbery, the whiskey robber. Like, if they had phones, they'd be like, Can we get a selfie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hashtag whiskey robber. Have you seen Attila do the d- the drunk robbing bit? I mean, it is. It really is something. So how much did he get away with that time? Because it was only like- nine hundred and sixty dollars, less than the value of the getaway scooter that he forgot at the scene. Oh. Uh, well, you know, you gotta take a loss once in a while in business, right? He a, needed. But a getaway scooter. Okay. I mean, he is he's actually a brand. He's on the it's lamb right. now. Getaway he's, scooter. He's not like kids he, love him. Yeah, he's he's, he's not operating he's in the slipping. secret anymore. You know, he's escaped from prison. He's the most wanted man in now, Hungary. Now I wonder, does this woman? Is she just up in the townhouse, just enjoying the yeah, townhouse? Yeah, she's still supporting. I think that they're. Or done did they now. seize it? They probably seized all his assets. That's what I'm guessing. You know, they guessing. took his oven. Oh, <laughs> oh, and the, but they left the knobs nice enough. They couldn't. <laughs> they they can't take the knobs from me. Hello. Attila needed around a hundred thousand dollars to enact his plan to escape for South America. But he only had a little under three grand. It was time to go all in and rob a five. He followed his usual plan, announcing the robbery and filling his duffel bag with cash before heading for the door. Get big shoes. He's drunk. <laughs> Size 14 uh, Reeboks? Yeah, yeah. Check. Oh, I forgot the fucking razor. That was the one thing. <laughs> At this I... point, he's so famous. Okay, so wait. This, he got, obviously got caught. But he was so drunk this one's, oh God. that he didn't realize. How drunk was he? <laughs> instead of the usual three minutes, this job took over 15. Because oh. he was just drunkenly stumbling around, <laughs> oh, talking to people. You gotta work on your was like the time I ran, I got shit hammered once, and I way more hammered, and I ran the light by probably like a good five minutes. I never did that kind of thing, and I was like, "Oh, they've been waving it for a while. How's it going?" And that's what this guy did in the world of yeah. Of, he uh, he of drunkenly robbery. ran. He, he ran, ran the, the robbery light. light. You have no business running the light that's for right. five minutes. No, Don't ever was, let me catch you. It was doing very that shit. well. It was, it was years ago, and I was hammered. I would, I would never do that. Oh man, see that's the one thing we talked about: robbery and <laughs> animal pelts, all those different shit. Like that is fine with me. Oh, you ran the light. You gonna Die! Yeah. I'm like, wow, I just, uh, you know, I just, I said it was a little mishap. I was drunk out of my mind. The police had the place surrounded. 
When he went for the door, it wouldn't open. Forgetting he had locked it and the key was in his pocket, Attila mm. pulled out his gun and tried to shoot the latch. Uh. Hearing gunshots, the police opened fire. Oh, he no. He went out like a bitch. That sucks. I know, by an accidental what, shot. Uh, yeah, what a great life he had, and he goes out like that. He might Attila, not have died. He's got more to Attila throw. Attila ran out the This back. whole story is about, like, don't drink and drive. Don't oh, drink. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't drink don't, and do anything. Don't come from Hungary. Yeah. <laughs> don't live in Romania. That's a good point. Stop playing hockey if you're no good. Attila ran out the back. Don't buy a shark's head. Bleeding. The glass from the window cut his hands and face. He died of a staph infection. Oh, no. Uh, how horrible. He That's turned down he a side street and quickly hopped a fence into a backyard. He got bit, he got by, bit by a dog. dog. Oh, oh, this is we what a way it. to go out. We knew it. He made it over, but he fell smart. George Zimmerman oh, pops out. No, he he broke his ankle and he died in the hospital from a, a <laughs> he, he was bit by a, sta- a snake when he fell over. He broke two fingers and knocked himself unconscious. See, I knew he broke something. Okay. The police searched all night but never found him this knocked out in a garden just a few hundred feet from the bank. This guy has luck. Jesus Christ. This guy's got an angel on his shoulder. Attila's lawyer called a press conference where he revealed the contents of his client's package. A note and a white (laughs) t-shirt. Very big, my friend. (laughs) The balls on this guy. (laughs) That's what I put the shoes on. It was a real slop maker. Oh, he's running a light, everybody. It was, it was Eric, a, you are. It was a note and a white T-shirt with a drawing and black magic marker. The drawing showed a bottle of whiskey and a scoreboard that read "Whiskey Robber 28, Interior Ministry 1. Oh, you can't do that. That's hilarious, dude. The note said, corrupt cops will never catch me. A slogan that soon made it onto the new batch of wildly popular T-shirts. Oh, dude. When he came to, Attila snuck back to his tight hideout. He surveyed his haul, $220,000, more than double what he needed. Nice. He went to call a friend to arrange a passport, but he couldn't find his phone card because he'd left it at his last drunken robbery. Ah, uh, <laughs> this guy. The police used the phone card to track his calls, and nine days later, Attila was back in custody. Ah, uh, Jesus. I know. He was almost, this is like Blow. You know the story of Blow? Yeah, I do. It was an amazing movie. It stars this uh, little uh, indie actor, Johnny Depp. Yeah. And he... You know, yeah, the movie? yeah, I remember a blow. And you just watching all that money in the like, bank, and he was just, and he wanted to get out too. Yeah, he's like, yeah. he changed, and like, he wanted to do good. And that last job, ah, this the time job. they held him in an all glass, one way mirrored oh, cell, of course, Hello, case. built to house the country's worst serial killer four years ago. Right, that's a Hannibal Lecter case. Mm-hmm. Hello, the state brought a total of sixty-five counts of robbery, several counts of attempted murder, and thirty to forty counts of violations of personal freedom. Did they put the serial killers in a regular thing now? They're like, eh, you're yeah, just a murderer. Yeah, you're, you're not you're robbing not, anyone, not right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, like, move that serial killer out of there. Let's get this real guy in here. Just cuff him to the heater. Like the Hulk something. prison from Avengers, right? <laughs> the prosecution struggled to make the violent count stick, mostly because their witnesses basically testified in favor of the defendant. Yeah, he's actually really nice. At the end of the six-month trial, oh yeah, that, 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 every single person, like every single prosecution witness was like, yeah, he was actually kind of cool. They all down played everything yeah. a lot of them wouldn't even testify he actually did some cool card tricks and made me a balloon animal <laughs> i like the guy at the end of the he gave me investment six... advice <laughs> sorry at the end of the six-month trial attila closed the proceedings with a 30-minute speech referencing socrates oh, chastising the state for letting rich embezzlers go free and offering the prosecutor the bottle of whiskey he received on criminalis 30 minute speech though that should be another trial jesus when he finally sat down it was you sure you're ready to do a half an hour no, what he did was he was running the light yeah, that's right <laughs> let this be a lesson to some of us it was time I did it to once judge. i came clean on this show and now i'm like a comedy court you run the light it was five years ago what's the statute of limitations i was drunk <laughs> if it makes you feel any better i now actually get off before i get lit uh, yeah, that's right. Just, no, he only just, he only does three minute sets. You know, like, please come stage. John Shasky, like, no, 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 I don't deserve this. <laughs> and then I put the mic back and I walk off. <laughs> so what happened at the end of the court case? The judge threw out the attempted murder charges. Good, but for the robberies, she gave him fifteen years in a maximum security prison, more than double what most murderers got. Really Jeez. weird. That's Attila weird. Ambrose served twelve years before being released for good behavior. He currently lives in a small town outside Budapest where he makes and sells pottery along with flasks and whiskey. What? He, he became an artist. He celebrated his 50th birthday this October. And you see, he's in, he's in the townhouse. To this day, UTE hockey jerseys with his name on it are still best sellers. Yeah, I fucking want one. If you're listening to this and you, uh, you want to give a gift us, get us that jersey. And that's the story of the whiskey robber. I wear like a large in hockey jerseys, maybe medium. I just realized right now that 
you have no more paper. I thought you were still doing the build up and then we were still going to do the show, but I just realized that this no, was he's, the show. That was His that 50th show. birthday was last month. <laughs> you're, you're like, and so the story begins. <laughs> yeah. After that hour. I, yeah, I thought he was like doing the build up. I just realized, oh, this, we just did the podcast. That was <laughs> about, <laughs> that was about the subject of our story's dad. Now here is. <laughs> It's not all about vicious murderers and shit. Some people are. I, this criminal's likable. He yeah. didn't hurt anyone. I, li- I liked him the whole way. He, he was made, drunk. I just don't like the alcohol. Like he, this is just a you know he Pink. shouldn't have drank so much. Look what happens but, when you drink. You but, drink. But what if he? You got caught or you run the light like this asshole. But he probably wouldn't have been able to rob without the booze. <laughs> Guilty the first as No, he, I think he would have. No, he, I think he would have gotten away with more. I don't know. He's like the what? What is he? Like, the, I think he eventually would have gotten caught because he would have been trying to go higher and higher and higher. You know. Sure. Like that's that's what would have got him. You know. So he just kind of was like, "I'm gonna go do this. I need to get some money." And then he like was like, "I'm drunk and like whatever." He gets a little loose, you know. He got cocky. Good for him though. He's fifty. He's still alive. What a life this guy. And he's is. making art now. I saw a picture of his birthday cake, and this it's all podcast, decorated. That's how you know you made it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a criminal. For all of us, all three of us, we're his, doing something right. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. His birthday cake for his 50th birthday is decorated on the logos of the places that he robbed <laughs> and the UTE hockey line. Are you serious? Yeah. I saw, so, I saw a picture of his birthday cake. It was it's funny, funny that he's credited with the places he robbed. I wonder if he does, like, does he do, like, public speaking? Does he, like, you know? Um, he, he They did a documentary about him, and there's some videos. I can't speak Hungarian, so I don't know what the videos oh, that are on his true. Facebook page say. What's it called? The Whiskey what? The Whiskey Robber. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Attila Ambrose is his name. Don't forget that you got to drop that... Uh, Drop that song in? That song in. Oh, yeah, I'm going to find that song. I wish his name was the Whiskey Burglar. Right. <laughs> Buga- like Risky Bugarler. The Bugarler. You could make that a Willie Nelson song. Whiskey Burglar. And if you want to listen to that awesome town. song by Gangsta Zoli, you can do it with studio headphones. Oh, they're amazing. I'm so stoked on them. Studio headphones, again, all the way from Sweden. Some of the uh, scan- that beautiful Scandinavian design. Which model do I have? We have the tray. Oh, head- we both have the, the tray. The tray in-ear, head- uh, in-ear buds. But for me, I like because I don't get my thing caught up. That's him. Not a bad looking yeah, guy. And that's you know him I mean? at fifty. You know? That's that's old him. That's not oh, even like yeah. in his prime. Yeah, he's got. Right? A, that's a, that's he like, looks the like one of the Backstreet Boys after they grew up. That's like Charlie bye, Sheen. Bye, post. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the tray is the newest model for those in an active lifestyle. Great for sports. You won't get the cord caught in a bunch of stuff like you do with certain headphones no, these are from great. certain companies. They're amazing. Sweatproof material. My oh, favorite yeah. part is they have different ear things, like different sized ear fobs to change in and out. Yeah. If you have small or big ear canals. Ear canals are like boobs. You have they're different sizes on each side. I'm not comes kidding. with a clip, a nice little leather carrying pouch. Uh, and again, you can use the code CRIME15. Crime with we'll, three eyes or just crime with C-R, one eye? Just regular C-R-I-M-E 15, not crime with three eyes. Very good point. Yeah. There's a movie coming out about I know. him, 2017. Yeah, uh, I think, is this the one where Johnny Depp is slated to possibly play him? No, was, I don't uh, think so. I oh, think that, that was, was the last in, story we did. That was in 2008, but his story was adapted by a, uh, uh, like a foreign filmmaker. Oh, fuck So it's yeah. going to be a foreign film. So we they, probably can see it with subtitles. Well, they'll have you remake. If it's any good, they'll remake it as an American film yeah. because we only remake stuff. We're not doing any originals well, anymore. This would be better as a series. I'd like to see like a ten episode Netflix series. About oh this yeah. Guy. Or like a, executive produced by Eric Griffin. Or like that. What's that, that network? Like 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 on AMC or something yeah. like that. No, here's you know? what we do. You play the hockey coach. Who keeps on giving Done. up? Yeah, <laughs> I want to. No, I want to be the other cop that doesn't get to. <laughs> oh, the, you want to be the you want to be the drunk cop who just yeah. who fucks up a bunch. I want to go to McDonald's and get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's your. Whole... Well, we can do that right now. <laughs> we don't need to wait for this film to get greenlit. Oh man! Wow, so high pitched about going it. to get drunk. This I'm guy. ready. All about it. I'm excited. Today's story is sourced from a book by Julian Rubinstein called Ballad of the Whiskey Robber, ah, just saw which that. has been optioned for a film by Warner Brothers and Johnny Depp. That is, This is the Johnny Depp one. Johnny no, Depp no, Johnny is, Depp, that was in 2008. Oh, but he's dropped off now. Yeah, that's 2008, uh-huh. and it was like a, one of the blacklist uh, you know, scripts that never got made. There you go. So they just they just did a movie now for a foreign film company, probably optioned the rights, and then now it's coming out in 2017. Fuck yeah. Get your facts right. Yes. Yeah, like, what the hell? In all You're embarrassing he, uh, me in front of my guest friend. <laughs> uh, Attila's total haul it was, was 89. around <laughs> eight hundred and forty thousand dollars was the final t- tally. Oh, he didn't even make a million. Practically nothing. Didn't even make a million for but, like a like for a whole life of like from seven. Yeah. when he started his crime of tree tree climbing, sure, all the way to fifty, 
Well, you know. But, it, but in an economically devastated communist country, it's enough to survive and get yeah, a townhouse right? with a shark's head. I'm proud of him, personally. Yeah, I, I thought, well, great story, man. Guys, if you're if you're listening to this right now, I just want to thank everyone that's, that's uh, been listening to the show and writing us reviews. We're always getting like new reviews in, which is the always two best things out. you can do for us are leave us those five star iTunes reviews, and more importantly, tell your friends that you like the show. Crime it, with three eyes. Oh, it means so much. In fact, if you could right now just go into your phone into like iTunes and click the share button and just pick one person that you think would be interested in the show and just share it with them. That would be killer. We would yeah. totally appreciate it. We're Thanks. trying to get more headphone sponsors. Seriously, guys. Please only, do it. Yeah, and it really, it really, sponsors. It does yeah, a lot for I, us. I surprisingly had a good time. Uh, <laughs> that's a really nice compliment. That's a really nice compliment. I'm going to go cry in the other room. <laughs> that's a comedian You're compliment. Preaching Eric, where no, can no, people no. find you on the internets and whatevers? I'm at Eric Griffin with a K. Eric Griffin. And, and it's an I at the end of Griffin, by the way, right? Yeah, Griffin. Yeah. So yeah. you can find me there. And I'll be you'll I'll be sharing the podcast on uh, my uh, social Hell yeah. media platforms. Right on. So, uh, you know, good times, guys. Thanks I can't wait it. to hear the next one. I want to hear, you know, this is a, I, I enjoyed this. Dude, you oh, were great. You. You're Follow amazing. the show at C R I I I M E pod on all social medias. Email the show, crime podcast at gmail.com with any story ideas, questions you have, dick pics, label those for Shevsky. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye, robot. Send pictures of your asshole to Slayton. He's a piece of shit. Bye, guys. Thanks. You're never going to stop with that dick pic thing, are you? Hogy a hobo volt a viharban született, mint a dob a korodban, még az én nehéz gyerek. Múlt-e elhagyta a fatelja a vezet, a legnagyobban neki csak ennyire tett. Szeni szakadt lenni, és lopta a tudszot, de balul sülte, és egyből megbukott. Pár évre bebaszták, a kóterban már jegyzik a nevét. Romániában ott kitanult egy-két dolgot, megmerült, szóra a kis kölyök lett. Mire hazakerült az utca nevelte, a fatelja nem volt már, csak egy fasz. Vette az a paraszt, betelt a pohár, nem volt tovább paradás, csumi fater, nem lesz aki elás, egy tervagon ajánl, jött át a határon, így kezdődik egy kibaszott állom. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. Két nap se telt el és állása volt Nem volt egy hülye gyerek, a minden smakkol Hokizni kezdett és befogadták a lilák Sírre került, kamázták Nem sokat szarozott, cseftelni kezdett Jött a lóvi, parófa, kocsit vette valahogy Nem jött be a meló, szarén, hogy ér, gájázni nem jó Megpróbált valami más kirámot Egy posta hivatalt, nem volt macerás 93. január 22. Az első a kibaszott sorban Megszületett a vízkis egy szép újkorban Mindig a csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A csiki bárkod a király, a pénz kis a legnagyobb tanár. A bankra a black show-ja lett, mint egy pénz. Ki az igazi férfi és ki az, aki vesz? Légy szükséget, nem egy habis tivét, és ha belekóstolsz, hamar elkap a vírus, egy de nagyobb lóvékat húzol. De mindig sikerült, és a tovább buszol. Az Orbán Gabi is bejött a képbe, hadd legyen a társa, folyton ezt érte. A Csiki Párus megosztotta vele a meló, a Gabi meghúzta fel a kéró. Egyre jobb bulik, de még mindig semmi bajunk. Bottal ütötték a nyomokat a saruk, hat évig király volt a pálya, de egy fasságon meg bukott az öreg rája. Ővé az érde, ma szizik a fakabát, pedig sose kapta volna el a király. A Csiki Párus a király. A víz kis a legnagyobb tanár, a csiki bárkod a király, a víz kis a legnagyobb tanár, a csiki bárkod a király, a víz kis a legnagyobb tanár, a csiki bárkod a király, a víz kis a legnagyobb tanár, a csiki bárkod a király, a víz kis a legnagyobb tanár, a csiki bárkod a király, a víz kis a legnagyobb tanár.